In last week's Force.com cast episode, we started looking at how we could use JSON and Apex together to serialize and deserialize Apex primitives, um, Apex custom types and custom classes, as well as serialize and deserialize collections from Apex to JSON and to reinstantiate them from JSON back into Apex. What we're going to do this week is the first of a multi-part series um, where we're going to start building a controller system that allows us to store state of controllers so that we can recreate the page at any point in time. So should we have like a multi-part wizard where a user has to go through many steps and enter data, um, we want it so that the user can navigate away and then come back to that session at a later date or uh, if they walk away from their computer um, and they're timed out or something like that, it stores their information nice and easily for us. You could also use this so that if we have a page that we want it to work um, with a website where there might be a limited um, internet availability, so it might be via a 3G phone or something, um, it can be recording the session state so that if they get disconnected, they can go back to that later on. So first thing we've got here is a new object I've created, which is called session state. It's a really simplistic object. Um, all it has on it, on it is a long text area, uh, which is at the full allocation of character allowance. Um, it's called state. It's all we're going to need for this uh, particular record that's going to form the base of our work. What we've done is within our system so if we open up the uh, controllers and everything we've got uh, here a stateful controller and what this is going to do is this is going to um, use the standard controller for the uh, state session object or session state object rather um, and it's also going to have a dummy controller in there so the dummy controller is what's actually going to be the page controller for the uh, page that we want to have and um, the state stored for so uh, this could be something we abstract away later on so that we can have many different controllers inheriting from a base type that does this. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to have a demo uh, dummy controller. And all this uh, controller has in its in, uh, constructor just uses a standard controller. And if there is a session state record, it retrieves it. And it sets the dummy controller to be the deserialized version of the state that we stored. Otherwise, it creates a new session state and a new dummy controller. And then we have a save method, uh, which is hooked up to a button where it just saves the session or upserts it and then returns us back to the list of all the session states. So this uh, page reference here, the slash and then the object key prefix, um, that will always return you to the uh, main list view page for the object. We then got our dummy controller here, um, and this is just a simple controller we're gonna use for the uh, example we're gonna do today. And in there we've got uh, two public variables. We've got a string called my string, and an integer called my int, and then we've got just a generic constructor which creates default and one as those two values. Now on our page what we've done is we've used the default session state standard controller and we've set our extension to be the stateful controller. What we're then doing is we're going to just output, um, we use very very basic markup here, you can make this look prettier as you'll see in a minute, um, and all we're going to do is we're just going to have an input uh, text area for the string and for the integer and we're going to use the save button. Now what we should notice is that we're referencing the variables that are stored on the dummy controller here. So here ctrl.mystring is actually the ctrl control dummy controller variable from the stateful controller and then the mystring variable from that. So that allows us to access that variable correctly and these will be set. When we want to save we hit the save button here and what this will do is it will call the save method on the stateful controller and I'll update the session to be the serialized JSON version of our dummy controller, and it'll upset the session. So let's go back into our org, and if we go into the session states, what we can do, so first of all, just uh, notice here I mentioned the key prefix earlier, you'll see that it's just that uh, URL there. So if I click on all, we should have uh, one example one I made earlier here, um, so just to show that there's none in there. So if I create a new session state, it just opens up my page for me. Um, I've just overridden the page. So I've just overridden the new and the edit buttons uh, for this object to work with what we want. So it creates the two values that we expect, default. So let's put this in as um, you know, high world. And we can put our integer in as 999. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save. And that will go away in the background. And it just sends us back to this main page. And you can see we've got a new record here, SS1. So if we go in and view this now, you can see that it's uh, serialized our uh, controller here, ready for us. So if I now click edit, which has been overridden as well, it takes us back into the page where it 
has re-instantiated it with these correct values. So I can update this again. Hit save. And then when I go back and open up SS1, you can see it's updated the value there and when we click edit, it recreates it on the controller for us. So this is really, really useful. It may seem very simplistic, but this is a very basic and simplistic example. But what we're doing is we're able to abstract away the controller so that we can have a controller that is using is used by our page for all of the functionality we want and has all the values we want stored on it. And we can save that to a session state record so it's just stored against the S object in that state variable, uh, in that state field. So what we can do is we could create as many of these session states as we want. So if I hit new, what you can see is that until I hit save, it doesn't do anything. So I can now you know, go back to the full list and we've still just got SS0 and SS1. That's all that we've got on there. So what we can do and what we'll be doing in future videos is, first of all, uh, you know, linking this up so that we get a slightly better control, so we want one with objects and things like that, and we can see how it builds up um, the JSON state to be a bit more um, you know, powerful and contain a few more details. And then what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a system uh, where the, uh, uh, the session will save every time we either navigate from one part of the wizard to the next, or we can also do it via polling if we want, so that every uh, number of seconds or every time a change is made on the page, it will go away and save one of these states uh, to the background so that it can be used um, in the future should the user need to re-instantiate it. We're also going to see how we can use um, the user record and the currently running user context to go away and do all of this in the background so that the user never has to see it and never has to worry about it. If you've enjoyed the videos, please subscribe to the Twitter feed, which is uh, twitter.com slash force.comcast. Um, I hope you enjoyed the videos and please give us any feedback.